Okay, so over one. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to be very briefly the work that we've done over the last uh, couple of years, uh, mainly on our Candelaria project. I'll touch briefly on our other two projects. We're essentially focused in, let me just get here, uh, this is a, a photograph of our Candelaria past producing silver mine in Nevada. We're focused in the southwest United States and we have three projects uh, there. The Candelaria past producing silver mine, which as I said is our flagship project. We also we also have two other projects, a very strong vein system in eastern Nevada, which is early stage, but we also have a, uh, another project in Arizona, which is an extremely high grade opportunity. Um, we're well financed and we have good financial backers. We um, essentially uh, are looking at silver, and I'm not going to belabor the silver, I'm sure we have experts talking on that, but it's a diminishing asset, it's essentially producing less than we are producing projected to consume and the electronics industry, although it's being tested in the last uh, several weeks, shall we say, we think the price is going to uh, rebound and uh, be in that strong mid-20s to uh, low 30 range for the foreseeable future. Um, essentially, lots of factors that can affect silver price, and silver does perform gold in uh, outperform gold in precious metal bull markets. But let's get on to our Candelaria project. Most of our our work has been uh, focused on that, and we're looking at, in essence, the Candelaria project on the western side of Nevada, very well situated from an infrastructure viewpoint. It was an early high-grade producer switched to open pit in the mid-70s, 80s, and 90s. Kinross was the last big producer. Uh, all told, produced about 68 million ounces of silver, shut it down with the collapse of silver prices in 1997, sold it off to silver. Standard, and then we went and we did a deal with Silver Standard in 2016 as they were rebranding their company and becoming a gold producer, selling off some of their silver assets. We got a very good deal. We get 100% with no royalties back to Silver Standard. Silver Standard did some drilling, outlined a large resource in ground in situ. It was 43101 compliant, but it is now historic because of its age, but we're working on updating that resource this year. There, it consisted of about 44 million ounces of silver at the measured and indicated level, plus additional 35 and a, 34 and a half million ounces of silver at the inferred level. On top of that, Kinross left a lot of silver in the old heap leach pads, which were never fully uh, exploited. And we drilled the leach pads, we did metallurgical testing, put out an updated 43101, we now have uh, proven in heap leach pad number one, which is in the photograph, additional 30 million ounces of silver. And in the other leach pad, which is hidden behind that little hill in the background, another 15 and a half million ounces of silver at an average grade of about 42 grams per ton silver. Can we think of using these leach pads as the first stage in the redevelopment of the Candelaria project? We've got uh, 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 optimism, shall we say. We look at other producers in the state of uh, Nevada, Coors Rochester mine is operating at an average head grade of 15 grams per ton silver, and they're only getting about 55% recoveries. Can we make a go of this? Well, what have we been doing to try and look at this? First of all, we inherited excellent infrastructure. We're looking at essentially the main highway that joins Reno to Las Vegas in the upper right-hand corner of this map. Good two miles of paved road past the leach pads to the old open pits. Resources from Silver Standard in pink. We've got a power line. It's connected. We pay our monthly power bills two water wells, each capable of five to 700 gallons per minute. So we've got all the necessary ingredients, to, uh, ingredients from an infrastructure viewpoint to rehabilitate this project. So what are we doing recently? There are the two big open pits. We've done about 25,000 plus meters of drilling in the last couple of years. We had some high grade intercepts down dip uh, to the northeast from the uh, Mount Diablo pit. Values up to 1,700 grams per ton silver and 2.5 grams per ton gold over about 2.5 meters. We've got other values, 1,100 grams per ton silver, 1.3 grams per ton gold over 8 meters within a 30 meter wide interval with grades that could be amenable to underground mining. Can we look at that area as future underground mining 
uh, that would be accessible by ramping down from the base of the pit. Then we've got extensions to the Diablo pit to the east and west. We have just completed 7,500 meter drill program. We're awaiting the results. The labs are very slow in getting them back to us, starting to dribble in. So stay tuned on that. We're also doing 1,500 meters of metallurgical uh, drilling right now. And with that information, we want to put out an updated resource by the end of the year and an economic study, <clears throat> first economic study on the project by the end of the year. So that's what their goals are. And then there is an updated, um, shall we say, uh, prospectivity to the Candelaria project that was not looked at in the past. We did an um, airborne magnetic survey. Essentially, the major break occurs between the mag high to the north and the mag lows to the south, with all the historic workings outwards from the big open pits. We found some material on some of the old historic added dumps, which is very different from the silver oxide mineralization that came out of the pits. And this is sulfide mineralization in an altered porphyry, which has abundant calcopyrite. We actually analyzed some of this uh, material, came back 2.76% copper with good silver and gold credits. And is there a porphyry system underlying Candelaria. We do see porphyry deposits just to the northwest of us. So that is a future prospective uh, exploration target. So for the rest of the year, doing the metallurgical drilling, metallurgical testing, we'll do more drilling, look at potential high grade, look at the porphyry potential, aim to get a resource update and an economic study out by the end of the year. Now, I don't have a lot of time left, so I'll just say the Cherokee project, extremely high grade uh, vein systems with some porphyry potential in the southeast. I won't even get into that. Uh, in the Arizona area, we're awaiting a drill permit to test some of these extremely high grade vein fragments that were found on the project. That middle one, 417 pounds, estimated to contain about 70% Silver, can we find the source of those? We're just uh, outside of Globe, which is a big porphyry copper producing area. Some of the specimens that we did analyze contained up to 459,000 grams per ton silver, or just under 50%. And we do have some drill targets just upslope from where those big vein fragments were found. And we do have a drill permit in with the forestry division. And we're just waiting for that very, uh, shall we say, slow moving government agency called forestry to get those drill permits. But our neighbors to the west actually do have their drill permits and they're in joint venture with South 32 and they are exploring for porphyry copper potential because in the south part of our property our veins are actually overprinted by the much younger porphyry mineralizing event which is exploited just across the valley by Freeport McMoran and uh, these have veins have a lot of copper, moly, silver lead zinc and gold. So that's what we're doing. Focusing right now, Candelaria, waiting drill permit on Phoenix Silver. This is our uh, trading pattern since the uh, company formed in mid-2016, just under uh, year-end, just under uh, 9 million in our treasury, enough to carry on for the end of the year, but if we want to ramp up expiration, we may have to go back to the markets. We'll see how things go. We do trade good trading volumes on our two exchanges. Eric Sprott's our largest shareholder. He's been in in the last three major projects private placements into the company, and uh, he's been a good, faithful shareholder. So uh, that's our story, and um, thank you.